welcome to Cult Mountain. I'm Britt Foe and I'm joined today in store by the street artist, commonly known as ATM. Hello. Hi, thanks, Hi. For, thanks for joining us today. Did you go to art school? Have you studied art formally? Yeah, I went to art college, yeah. When I was, uh, when I was younger, I was very into painting birds and animals and uh, <coughs> going to art school was a bit of a shock because it was frowned upon. It wasn't really part of... Uh, that, that was in the days of when conceptualism ruled everything and it wasn't really um, um, accepted as an art form. It was more considered to be illustration, so I had a, bit, I had a battle with uh, a lot of tutors about that. So did, did you learn a lot from art school, sort of with technique and that? But No, I didn't learn anything about technique from art school because uh, uh, the traditions of painting and drawing had kind of been lost and... So it was more about ideas and looking at other artists. That's what the um, the tutors were would would kind of talk about. So, but I learned a lot from my fellow students. To, you know, exploring our own interests. But it was very much like uh, there was a few of us into um, traditional, more traditional painting and drawing, and uh, we were like a little kind of secret group by ourselves, <laughs> stu studying away. Not in the mainstream. No, nah, not at all. No. <coughs> no. And um, can you tell me a little bit about your, your subject matter, the things that you like to, to draw and paint? Well, I've been, I'm paint, I've been painting endangered birds on walls to, um, to try and raise awareness, because there's a major extinction crisis going on at the moment in the world generally. And is it it's the sixth mass Holocene? Well, it is, yeah. There have been five previous mass extinctions where you know up to 90% of all species have become extinct, and uh, oh. there's... A lot of scientists think that that is actually we're in the middle of that happening now. It's in the process of happening. So, and like a lot of very com once very common British birds have just dr they're they're down in numbers by seventy or eighty percent in the last thirty years. It's like it's it's quite extreme. It's extreme. Wow, that is so extreme. yeah, yeah. So, I, I wanted to kind of um, get talk about that and also um, try and do something about it to reverse it. So through your work, you raise awareness of birds that are becoming extinct, you you do animals as well, don't you? You have, um, ATM has lost posters that he puts up around around London with extinct animals, bees and wolves yeah. and things yeah. like that. Well, it, I mean, it's, yeah, that's all, because, I mean, ecosystems are all um, interconnected, so if a bird species goes, that is because, for example, Insect species have become extinct, or the 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 flower the flowerings or the seed plants on which they feed have become extinct, right. and then so it's a whole it's a whole web sort of, of connections. Dominoes. So really. it's not just about one if one creature becoming extinct, and often you know uh, a species coming uh, come extinct is the last kind of um, s signal of a real disaster within you know that's previously been invisible within an ecosystem. So. It's, it's, it's very complicated. The, bir right. the birds are just one part of it. Okay. It's about ha the whole habitats, really. It's whole habitats and uh, about toxins in the environment and uh, lots of different things. And what can people do to sort of help this extinction? Just well, people I mean, at home. I mean, there are national. Uh, well, there are national organisations trying to, um, you know, like the RSPB does a lot of things to reclaim reed beds, for example, that have. <coughs> you know, to re restore them to their their previous uh, um, like, former glory. Yeah, exactly. You know, where because they, they they become silted up or they or drained by to, for farmland, and then you know they don't sustain the same number of species. But people can do things like uh, just planting uh, insect and bird friendly plants in their gardens or. You know, not spraying weed killer on their lawns, and or not, um, you know, spraying their roses with aphid killer because these though those insects are all the things that, for example, house sparrows would feed their young on. And one of the reasons why house sparrows are disappearing from London, virtually have disappeared, is because they um, there's not enough insects to feed the chicks, and the chicks die of starvation. Yeah. So and um, and also you know, concreting over front gardens to make way for. Um, you know, to co park a car rather than having a hedge where sparrows can find shelter and things right. like that. all those things. It's all connected, okay. and also the concrete of um, from from uh, gardens is, you know, makes 
flooding all the more likely as well. So it, it, you know, there's ramifications throughout throughout it. And but but people, I don't think, realise when they're sp spraying their gardens with all these chemical products, the fact that they're actually killing the birds that they love indirectly. Exactly. Uh, so that's that's what can be. Uh, yeah. Yeah. People can be made more aware of that. Great. And um, what is your sort of point of view on <coughs> on conceptual art? And do you why do you think it's important? for art to sort of have a message, like, like your art? Well, um, that's a really big question. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's conceptual art and conceptual art. All art is conceptual, you right. know, in some ways, but, um, yeah, there's a bit, it's... it's um, or art, I, art having a meaning, why, why is For me, yeah, I, for me, I, I, art has to have a meaning, but I know people make art for all sorts of different reasons, but for me, I think um, it... It needs to be about the real world and a response to the real world and what's actually happening now, and that's when it can be really important. And using your art to, to spread a message and create awareness. Yeah, well, that, that's a that's a, that's a really positive um, aspect of public art, or street art. You know, that it can you know re you you can actually make a difference by reaching a, a really wide audience. Yeah. And it and it doesn't have the same. <coughs> layers of kind of ambiguity or kind of obfuscation that like a lot of conceptual art does which seems to be there to kind of confuse people or you know not to communicate so uh, which is fair enough but yeah because you know. I, I think a lot of art can be quite intimidating yeah so that's why I really love street art because it's just sort of yeah, it's more direct. It's all kinds yeah. of people you don't need to be in a gallery or exactly yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. galleries themselves can be quite intimidating exactly there's all that you know, I, I do you understand the picture? <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if I do. Yeah, it can be elitist, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's good to make. Uh, that's why I like street art because it's not it's absolutely not elitist. So. Yeah. And what would you say has sort of been some of the challenges of being a full-time artist? Well, it is very difficult to be a full-time artist. I mean, you know, the, the challenge is to make money just to live so that you can carry on yeah. doing your own. That's, that's the challenge for all artists. And uh, so you, you just have, you know, have to do as many different things as possible usually, you know, to make, make ends meet. And uh, that's why I've, I'm quite surprised I've managed to do it, actually. Because <laughs> it's not something you can plan, you know. It's all, you just have to kind of have the faith to do it and keep going, and things come up. And I think by doing by doing something, things do do come up. So you've got to kind of take the uh, you've got to be a bit courageous about it and go for it if you've got a, if you've got a passion and a, or you've got um, good you know strong ideas and you've got to just go for it. I think. And the passion sort of drives you to keep going. Yeah, you know, yeah. No matter what happens, you, yeah, you still sort of def want to do it. Definitely. Inside yeah. calling, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. To, to be because it's, it's very easy to get put off, you know, by uh, all sorts of things not going how you want them to. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think about the importance of creativity? in our sort of contemporary society, how important do you think creativity Well, it's, is? it's absolutely fundamentally important and uh, it's really worrying that, you know, the way modern education is going in this country where art is becoming seen as less and less significant. Um, you know, I think it's, uh, it's very damaging for children growing up not to um, be able to express themselves through art and music and dance and, you know, All whatever. All kinds of Yeah, things. yeah, whatever, yeah. It's, it's also quite, quite cleansing, yeah. isn't it? For yeah, for it's good for uh, and it's good for communication and uh, you know understanding the yeah. the wor the wider world. Yeah, because you can you can bring up so many topics through through art in sort of a non non shouty way. Yeah, it totally. can just be quite subversive and subconscious almost, which is really good. Yeah, and it taps into all yeah um, all sorts of um, good things about human development, you know, practicing art, you know, you, 
it, it encourages people to concentrate and focus and you know really look at the world as well yeah and mm. there's there's no sort of boundaries as well as what I really like that, yeah you know you can come from any country speak any language and just a picture has you know yeah it's fundamental without yeah drawing language yeah. it's very basic mm. and fundamental yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. Where, where can we see some of your your work is well, I've done quite a few on the uh, South Acton Estate, on which is Bollow Bridge Road, and uh, they were I did pa I, pa I painted a partridge and a snipe and a barn owl, which not so long ago would have lived in that area, um, right. uh, whereas now it's just mu so much more built up and um, urbanised. But you know, there was a time when there would have been little fields and hedgerows and a bit of marshy marshy ground by the river, and um, I think that uh, uh, that could be reclaimed. To a large degree, there's a there's um, a lot of um, uh, you know unused old industrial land or just tarmacked over land which which is derelict and which could actually be reclaimed in one way or another. I mean, I know people are making community gardens now uh, using big grow bags and things like that because the, the the ground is a bit toxic. But you know, so that but they're actually so you've got um, plant life and then you've got insects and birds as well. So right. there's lots of ways that um, things can be improved, definitely. And they all complement each other. And I, I know we're running out of time, but do you think it's sort of not too late? There is still time to to change to change things and bring well, wildlife yeah. back. Well, I mean, there's a huge um, global crisis, and you know the the pressures of exploiting resources is, is going on but you know in a, in a local in a local way in a specific way definitely things can be done I mean great busters have been brought back after being extinct for 180 years and wow. yeah and uh, I did a painting I did a painting of great busters in um, in Whitechapel and um, bitterns have come back up they were extinct in the 19th century as well and so I mean things can be reversed not not Maybe not all the way, but you know they they can be improved. It's helping. Yeah, definitely. And what what other birds are endangered well, in, this country, the, in this country? There's countless birds. The you know a lot of um, songbirds, a lot of uh, particularly farmland birds because of industrial modern farming and you know um, monocultures and you know overuse of pesticides and and that don't allow wildflowers in fields or and hedgerows are savagely cut back and things like you know or removed and it's just um, there's a, a lack of diversity because of um, getting rid of the diversity of, of the, the flowers and the wild plants to grow one crop yeah so so th and th it doesn't have to be like that necessarily. you know it could things could change it's just become um, it's, it's, it, I mean and the other point is that the ground is toxic, and you know there's toxic chemicals used in food production that that are actually in the in the food supply and in our bodies. And it's you know they they um, they. It's I mean it's hard. It's, well, well, it's it's hard to find sp a specific kind of cause, and you know that's why a lot of people can always say there's no evidence. But we are full of toxins, yeah. and there is a huge increase in cancers and uh, degenerative diseases in in modern Western cultures. So I, I think there's a connection. Absolutely. And, and so it would do everybody, uh, you know, the health of, the, of everything, yeah. uh, us including, included, uh, if, um, if there was, you know, less, less toxicity in the environment. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for, thank you. for coming into Cut Mountain and chatting no, with us pleasure. about the importance of, of birds and your lovely work. Thank you so much and please join us again next week when we have another artist in store. And Carl, well, well... Thank you very much for, you. for coming into Carl Bounds and chatting with us. Thank you so much and...